Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to game number four of the 38th annual Cole Bowl Classic. Tonight's game will feature the hometown Breton Education Center Bears that take on the Northumberland High School Nighthawks. I'm Alex McLeod. I'm joined by my good friend, Alan Rosato. Alan, good to have you here. It's been a long time coming, Alex. It's been championship game 2018 since the last time we commentated. Sure, it's been our last it's game It's been together. a long time, yeah. Wow. Officials for this evening's game, Dale Farish, Paul DeBailey, and Shauna Poirier. As Aaron McLean, he hands it off to Ben Kearney. Over to Ethan McNeil, he'll take a little fadeaway jumper. Can't get that to go off the glass. And looks like McLean's gonna get called for a push off. It'll be his first personal foul. Ferris coming out in a 2-2-1 press. That's going to be a good call. That's a foul on Connor. Connor Chess on that is. That's his first person. Two quick fouls early in the game here, Al. Alex, I know we talked about this before the game, that foul trouble could be a thing for the Bears. I think the size of Northumberland could be a lot to handle. Bears are taller than what they usually are, but they're still undersized for this tournament. And the corner three, no good, but an offensive rebound. And the drive and the floater. And that one won't drop for Marcus McLeod. But a quick put back by Rain DeCoste. Gives him the early lead. And the fast break. And another easy bucket there from Rain DeCoste. Quick 4-0 lead for the Nighthawks. McNeil gets it up to Kearney. Kearney drives baseline, little floater. Can't get that one to fall. Here come the Nighthawks the other way. And almost stolen there by Carter Brown. Nighthawks working around. The three-point attempt is good. Marcus McLeod from long range. McNeil now drives. Goes right to the rim. It's blocked. He wanted a whistle. Not going to get one. As it's the Nighthawks, quickly in transition. Over to DeCoste. He'll drive, spin, and gets it to go off the glass. And we're going to have a quick timeout right here. There. From the Bears, 9-0 run to open the game. A skilled move right there, that stuff to stop. Not how the hometown <laughs> faithful thought this one was going to start. Talking with Sandy before the game, you, he wanted that's, this game that, to That's spin. Coach Sandy. Coach Sandy, sorry. Yes, yeah. Talking with Coach Sandy before the game, he wanted this on a Monday night. Figured the energy in the building would be good because it might be a little bit of a, a tough game. Energy of a Monday night. And this is a, either a meaningless stat or a super number. 15 straight Mondays, the Bears have won. Wow. According to you, you told me that, but I'm going to repeat it back to you for the fans. <laughs> I said approximately. Appro okay, approximately. approximately. Well, now you're lying to me. I thought we had a good well, I didn't know we were just going to you know, right. talk about this as soon as we got on air. Oh, well, it's the start of the game. we got to get something going. It's true. 9-0 lead for the Nighthawks, powered by DeCoste with six and a three from McLean. McLeod, sorry. Coach Sandy Kearney using that quick timeout, trying to settle his boys down. Alan, you mentioned foul trouble. Could be an issue for the Bears, those two quick fouls. They only carry 10 players on their roster. Back here, Brown, gets it over to Chesson. Chesson goes, sideline, tries to get the floater, can't get it, it's blocked. And we have an inadvertent reset on the shot clock. Bears get away with one. Three from Kearney's no good. Nice rebound from McLean. Kearney wants another attempt, and this one splashes. You love to see the confidence yeah, in the Yeah, exactly, player. and it's the first one, get it right back. Put it in. Shoot or shoot. going against Carter Brown. His first personal foul, the third team foul of the quarter. And that's a 
Aaron pass. It's picked off by Chesson. And McNeil now. McNeil spins, dishes it at the top to Chesson. Hillier now just checked into the game. And Morgan Hillier can't get that one to drop. McLeod gets it over to number nine, McDonald. And DeCoste thinks about the three. And a wide open look for three now from Rico, but that one couldn't drop. Another look for three, a lot of threes going up early here. Again, no good. Rico wants another try, still no good. And finally, a defensive rebound Bears by got Aaron McLean. Bears got away there, Alex, without a couple second chance opportunities. Good job here by Morgan Hillier, drawing for contact. Looks like the foul is going against Lexter Rico. This is his first personal foul. Team's first as well. First free throw, no good from Hillier. Reminder, you can join the conversation on Twitter. Hit us up at Coleball Live. Questions, comments, feedback, analysis. Tell us where you're watching from, who you're cheering for. Anything at all, we'd love to hear from you. This is Rico now. Back to McLeod. And a good pressure here from Ethan McNeil. The spin move. And he lost his balance there, but Aaron McLean comes in and gets two. And now it's McDonald. McDonald will slow things down for the Nighthawks. McLeod wants three. He connects. And a good pressure there from Rico. Almost stealing the inbound. And we're going to have a substitution checking into the game. As Noah Spaulding will check in for Bryce Stevenson. Hillier to carry across the timeline for the Bears. And Looked a lob at the McLean, but got their signals crossed. That's McLeod now. He wants a pull-up three. Short. Rebounded by Ethan McNeil, the grade nine superstar for the hometown team. That foul's going to go against Marcus McLeod. First personal foul, second team foul. Carney now. Gets the chess on to McNeil. He'll hit a three. Ethan McNeil getting himself going here. 12 8 your score. Bears continuing to apply the pressure in the backcourt. Good work there by the Nighthawks to beat him, and they get a dump off, and DeCoss is going to walk and take another two. The ball movement there, find the open man. That's too easy for the cops. Yeah, they just got that lob to that big body, and we saw him in warm-ups. He can definitely jump up with the best of them. He's got the mops. They just they throw it up, and he goes up and gets it. Jeremy O'Quinn will check into the game. Proud uncle Darren O'Quinn on the sideline taking pictures. Very proud uncle. It's going to be a blocking foul going against Braden McDonald, his first, team's third. Chess on to inbound, gets it into Kearney. Kearney wants three, might have been tipped as Chess on catches it. And he'll get the up and under to go. McLeod now trying to skip it. Good job there from Jeremy O'Quinn coming flying in for the steal. Great anticipation there by Jeremy to pick that off. Let me get a foul what called here. Chesson will head to the line. I missed who that foul went against because I was trying to listen to what official Paul Bailey was saying. I'm 
being told the foul was on Noah Spalding. We have a steal here from McNeil. He's not going to get that one to drop. McLeod now. He's, that's going to be a travel. That's, that's a good call by veteran official Paul DeBailey. Feel the momentum shift just a little bit there, Alex. A big shift here in these last four minutes for sure as Coach Stinson going to call a timeout, talk to his troops. So, Alan, what have you seen from both teams so far early in this one that you've liked? Uh, the second chance opportunities that uh, Northumberland are getting. They are missing some shots, but with a team this size, if they start shooting and making them, it'll be tough for, for Beck to stay in the game. Beck, their press seems to be working a little bit, you know. They're putting the pressure on and getting a few turnovers, so uh, I like both sides. I don't know, Coach Sandy, he, I think he should be a little bit worried about the opportunities they're getting on the, the offensive glass. And we do have a couple of tweets in. Ashley Spaulding says, let's go, Noah Spaulding. Thank you for your tweet. We have a tweet in from Eric Walzak that says, terrific job on the commentating, boys. Have either of you thought about a future in broadcasting? What do you think, Al? I, I, think, I don't think, think so. You think we should replace uh, Devlin and Armstrong for the Raptors? No. No? I think we'd be better. Well, maybe not. Well, I would hope so. And we have a tweet from Kelly who says, Go Nighthawks! Like Thank you, every, everyone, like for him. your tweet. We need some personality. McNeil gets it into Chesson. Chesson drives. Oh, he stump off pass to Old Quinn, but he gets blocked out of bounds. Seven seconds on the shot clock to shoot for the Bears. And that inbound pass is tipped and stolen. Into Rico, gets it over to McLeod. Rico, and they swing it back around to Ross. Stolen by Kearney, gets it over to Morgan Hillier. Hillier drives, and that one's blocked out of bounds. Big block from Rice Stevenson. Northumberland's having a block party. The Bears are invited right now. Well, they have two huge players in the middle. As we said, Beck a little undersized compared to Northumberland. And the Bears are going to run outside stack. So we all know what that means. You throw the ball into Ethan. <laughs> Nice hesitation here from Kearney. He'll put up the left-hand floater. Can't get that one to drop. Now Rico coming. Gets it over to McLeod. McLeod tries to split. Dacos now. Gets it over to Ross. The corner three from Rico. That won't drop. Good rebound from Dacos. McLeod, he'll take the open three. No good. Rebound is by Ethan McNeil. Chasson now pushes up to Carter Brown. Launches a three, can't that, get that one to fall. Very fast paced game here in our first quarter of play. Rico gets it up top to McLeod. Into the corner for Ross, gets it to DeCoste. He's gonna drive and get it to go off the glass. Nice throw, nice throw. Very hard guy to stop in the lane right now. That one's taken away. Here comes McLeod. Gets it over to Ross. Back to McLeod. And he drops it in. Five point lead now. Two and a half minutes to go here in our opening quarter. 
Chesson shoots from the corner. No good. Rebounded by Kearney. And a mid-range shot from McLeod won't drop. McNeil now trying to slow down the pace. Picks up his dribble, gets it over to Kearney. Seventh, a very deep three from Connor Chesson brings out. He's gonna have a couple substitutions coming in for the Bears. Waylon Petrie and Aaron McNeil checking in. McLean, Aaron McLean, sorry. Alex, I'm liking the play of Kearney so far for, for being such a young kid coming in uh, opening night at Cold Bowl. He's really stepping up. Yeah, we mentioned uh, Ethan McNeil with Ben Kearney, also a prodigy. Uh, two grade nine starters on the Cold Bowl team this year. Uh, nice take there from Rico. Lexter Rico goes right to the rim. Three, no good from Chesson. Loose ball, Wayla Petrie tracks it down. Brown now, gets it over to McLean. McLean gets it into the corner. Kearney for two, nothing but net. That was a pretty possession there, Alex, to get that rebound, fighting back for it. And just tickled the twine, didn't even come close to touching rim. Rico, he gets it up to Spalding. Rico now for three, he connects. Uh. That's a big answer. That is a big answer. Kearney gets it down low. Oh, well, sorry, gets it to the wing to Chesson, but that, those long arms of DeCoste denying that entry pass. Braden McDonald will check back in for the night Hawks as McLeod takes a well-deserved break. Kearney now. Kearney wants three, and he got three. Ben Kearney having a strong first quarter. And Coach Kearney wanting an offensive foul. I think he's right. Yeah, he might have a case there, but he's not going to get it. He's not going to get the call there. It's Rico now. Spalding, he's going to head to the line for a pair. Second differential between game clock and shot clock. Kearney drives. I think he's going to get a travel there. That's that's a good call. He kind of bounced off and fell backwards. 19.3 to go. Shot clock is turned off. Fourteen to shoot. Rico now gets it over to McDonald. Back up top to Rico. They swing it around to Cost. Gets it back over to McDonald. Rico at the top. He'll shoot for three. Can't get it to drop. Offensive rebound. The putback no good from Cohen Ross. And at the end of the first quarter of play, the score is Northumberland Nighthawks 24, Breton Education Center Bears 18. And Alan Coble, such a big tournament. Uh, one of the most prestigious in all of Canada. Not all of Canada, most prestigious ever. Ever. Ever anywhere. True, because yeah. we actually have viewers from all across the globe right now, including really? in Melbourne, Australia. Ooh. I know Novak Djokovic is there. Is it him? It, it might be Djokovic. He might be watching too. Okay. But uh, former broadcast partner Dylan White also there, friend of the stream. 
He is a friend of the stream. He should be in this chair. He should be. I, I wouldn't have to do all the work then. Exactly. I'd have to do no work. I don't have the kind of puns Dylan provides either. And we have a tweet in from Jonathan Hillier. It says, cheering on Morgan Hillier. We love you, Morgan. Go back, go. And we have a, another tweet from Ava. It says, so proud of my tall man-child of a cousin, Ethan McNeil. He is a man-child. He is so he's a big boy. Yeah. Uh, another tweet in from Giant Squid, who says, loving the commentary. Thanks for broadcasting live via YouTube so I can watch my nephew Connor and the Bears and all the action at home all the way from Australia. Another viewer from Australia. Oh, we gave too much credit to Dylan. Maybe he's spreading the word down there. Wow. Enjoy the week. Go, Connor. Go, Bears. She, OK, so she definitely thought we were going to say her when I said we have viewers yeah. in Australia. Yeah. And then bang. Not you. What are the odds? Two Australia viewers. Love it. And we're back underway here in the second quarter. McDonald. Sorry, McLeod. Gets it over to Rico. Looking for Stevenson down low. Taken away by McLean. Here's the man child McNeil. Gets it over to Brown. And entry pass to McNeil. Gets there. 10 to shoot for Kearney. And he's going to travel. Rico now for the Nighthawks. And McLeod gets past that press easily. McLeod looked like he wanted a three. They get it over to Stevenson. Strong move by Stevenson, and he's going to earn a trip to the line. That's good bully ball there from the big man. Yeah, big time. That's Aaron McLean's second personal foul. First foul of the quarter. Stevenson, Evan will connect on the first. And unable to connect on the back half. 25-18, just under a minute into the second quarter. With the visiting Nighthawks leading. McNeil gets past, he'll take the pull-up jumper, can't get it to go. Good hustle here from Carter Brown. But here comes Rico in transition. Rico going right to the right, can't get it to drop. Almost stolen, good hands here by Ben Kearney. Going coast to coast. And that's swatted away by Dacos. We're going to have Aaron McLean. Looks like he's picking up his third personal. Looks like everyone thought it was going to be a shooting foul, but it is called on the floor. Coach Stinson looking for uh, He wants the continuation yeah, call. Yeah, he wants. Get it into Stevenson. Back out for McLeod for three. No good. Double tap off the rim. I think Stevenson might have had that one if it didn't. And Chesson drives right to the rim and drops it in for two. Ross easily getting it over to the big body of Stevenson. No good there from DeCoste as Chesson comes up with it. Chesson going coast to coast. It's going to be a blocking foul going against McLeod. That's his second personal foul. First team foul of the quarter. 
Connor Chess onto the line for two. Ah, I'm glad I have a pronunciation correction. It's Reese Stevenson. That's what I was going to say, but then our in-house announcer, Gary, uh, former Cobol MVP Gary McDonald, said Rice. So we're going to go back to Reese. Thank you for your tweet, Tara. Aaron McLean gets in for a bucket. Rico now getting it over to McLeod. To the corner for Ross for three. And no good. And it looks like we're going to have a foul going against Ethan McNeil. Ethan played in this case, but I did think he got a little uh, a little pushy there. Just his first personal. McNeil will take a seat. Well, Quinn checks back in. McDonald now into the corner for McLeod. Back up top to McDonald. He's wide open. Can't get it to drop. Good box out and rebound there from McLean. Chess on now. Gets it over to Kearney. Kearney gets it to the free throw line for McLean. Spins, drives, and he can get Good patience there, nice yes. footwork, able yes. to draw the contact. You gotta like that in the air and you don't. Know, little hesitation move, get, uh, get the cost up in the air, draw the contact. And uh, our fan of the game from earlier, Giant Squid, is uh, Rochelle Wilcox Gillette. So great to have you with us, Rochelle, watching from just outside Sydney. in from Blaze Stevenson saying, let's go big man, Rice, Reese, I said Rice again, I'm oh, sorry, Reese wow. Stevenson, and people, somebody's looking for a back over call, but it was clearly not back over as he was still straddling the half court line, and Cloud now, the floater, won't drop, the cost with a nice put back. Brown now. Gets it to Chesson. The deep skip pass for Ben Kearney in the corner. Put him in a tough position. And that's going to be a turnover. Oh, nice, nice split step there by McLeod. Rebound. Corner three, Rico. Bang. Book it for Rico. As the Bears will take their second time out of the half. As the Northumberland Nighthawks have opened up a seven point lead. We have a tweet in from Kenzie who says, cheering for my boy Noah Spaulding. Thank you all for your tweets. Alan, Coach Kearney, not happy what he's seeing right now. What is he saying to his squad over there as they try to make this push going into the halftime break? You know what? The last couple possessions, they were really collapsing the, uh, the post area to try and stop uh, Tagast. But. Uh, Northumberland's starting to make some shots, so I think he's just trying to reassess his defensive strategy here. On the other side of the ball, the Bears rely heavily on uh, grade nine, Ethan McNeil, who's on the bench right now. We've, we've seen some good output, some great output, actually, from Ben Kearney. He's had a half to remember for the Bears. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ben's played the entire first half so far. I, I don't remember him coming out. Nah, he's got young legs. That's right. He'll be fine. That's right. Only four more days. I mean, the one thing, the good thing is their, their coaches don't get to worry about, you know, the father complaining that he's playing too many minutes. It is, you know, 
He is the father. He is Coach Sandy's son. And it looks like we didn't run our timeout timer. We ran the main clock. Assistant coach Tyler Matson on the uh, clock watch knows exactly right down to the second. Tyler, a former player himself. Tyler, a great player back in his heyday. Now a great official as well. Yes. Kearney will carry for the Bears. He gets it to McNeil, who's back into the game. Taken away by Rico. Good defense there from Brown. The corner three for Spalding, no good. Rebounded by the Nighthawks and a three from McLeod, that drops. Second chance opportunities hurting the Bears right now. Just so difficult to keep this big Nighthawks team off the glass. And Kearney there trying to make something out of nothing. Rico for three. And nice board there from Chesson. Chess on driving, and that's going to be a blocking foul. Bears yeah. faithful, letting him know that he can't do that. Can't do that. As a good friend of mine, Daryl DeVoe, once said, sure you can, it's just a foul. <laughs> I can do it four more times. <laughs> That does sound like something he would say. That's, that's, that's word for word. As a free from Kearney, no good. Rebounded by Chesson, can't get it to drop. Rico now. The corner, Spalding. Short. McNeil now. I thought he was going to get yeah. away with that, but that, that was a travel. <laughs> Just about five minutes to go here in the first half. Nighthawks holding a 10-point advantage. DeCoste now gets it to a streaking Donald in the lane. Can't get the roll. Officials having a word with Ethan. He's trying to tone him down a little bit. Jumper no good. Another offensive rebound and another one. And Ethan McNeil is going to pick up his second personal foul. Head to the line for two. No good on the first. We have a couple of tweets in. One from John King, who says, great job with the commentating, Big Allen Alex. Thanks, John. John King, a former uh, coach himself. He cut me in my grade 12 year. I hope you're listening, John. <laughs> no hard feelings. <laughs> Not that he holds a grudge. The second, <laughs> second free throw is good. Kearney now gets it over to Brown. And almost taken away by the cost. Eventually taken away by Spalding, who splits and stops. And McLeod now. The fake, the floater, the bucket. Thirty-six twenty-three for the visitors. Plain catches it on the free throw line, drives Great right and gets a good Great bucket. Move. That was a much needed basket there for the Bears as the Nighthawks look to open this one up. McLeod with I think it was a lob pass to the cost. Yeah. That's hard to stop. He's just too big and too strong. Yeah.
Looks like Chesson was going for the shot there. Highly contested. And I don't think he knew what he wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, he, he, uh, he got lucky there. Ended up getting tipped out of bounds. We have a tweet in from Cassie who says, Ethan, Ethan McNeil's aunts and, aunts and cousins watching from Halifax losing our voices. Great to hear from you. As Waylon Petrie is going to earn a trip to the line. Nice pass down low. Good catch. Good job going right into the contact. As Rico is going to pick that one up. His second personal. 14 foul. First one is good from Petrie. Unable to connect on the second. Rebounded by Spalding. They get to Stevenson. There's McLeod. Breaks through. Back over to Stevenson. Over to the corner for McDonald. Back up top. McLeod three. Can't get the roll. Nice rebound by Spalding. Gets Rico a wide open three. And the second chance threes are killing the Bears right now. What the a battle body. on the offensive glass. The big bodies down low. One almost taken away. We're going to have a foul going against Spalding. It's his second personal foul, and it's going to mean bonus for the Bears. Important couple minutes here. You want to close that deficit up before halftime. Definitely looking to chip into it. But, you know, as they say, there's no 15-point shot. Got to have good possessions on both ends of the floor each time. No good from Hillier on the first. Good on the second. McDonald now gets it over to Stevenson. Rico back to Stevenson, back to McLeod. McDonald thinks about a three. Rico. Over to Spalding. He'll take the three, and he'll hit. What a shooting performance thus far from the visiting Nighthawks. Hillier now. The floater over the big man. Can't get it to drop. Good outlet pass here from McLeod. Uh, good block there, it looks like, from Chesson. Yeah, he might have got a piece of it there, Alex. And Kearney, little out of control. <laughs> Tosses up the right-hand floater. And we're going to have a frustration foul there coming for Morgan Hillier. And that's going to mean free throws as well. Quinn is going to check back into the game for the Bears. Spalding's good on the first. We have a tweet in from Lana who says, Go Nighthawks, looking good. Ka Ka from Baby J's mom. I think it was more of a Ka Ka. And no good on the second. Rebound taken by Kearney. Oh, nice finish there for Carney. Carney's having a half. He's been a bright spot for them here. Spalding now. Gets it over to McLeod. Drives. Can't get the floater to go. Rebound by Stevenson. And just so big. Unable to get it to go there. We're going to get an over the back foul. He is not a fan of that call. You know what? He put he got a chest on block the first one, and then he got it back, and it just went in and out. A good solid box out there, and the big man had to go over the top. And 
and that one's good. Ross now gets it over to Stevenson, over to Spalding. Spalding to McLeod, gets to Stevenson, the corner three from Spalding, no good. Rebound taken by McLean. Chess on now. Going to his left. And we're going to get a blocking foul going against Spalding. Chasson heads to the line for two. Unable to connect on the first. A couple missed opportunities with these free throws in the last few minutes here, Alex. I know it's a 14-point game, but that's three or four missed already. And second is good from Chesson. Reminder that at halftime of today's game, we have uh, Shakira and Jennifer Lopez performing straight from Miami. The only thing bigger than Super Bowl is Cole Bowl. As Ross now gets it over to DeCoste. Strong move from DeCoste, and he's going to earn a trip to the line. Connor Chesson will pick up that foul. His third personal foul. Carter Brown will replace him for the final minute and two seconds of the quarter. We had a horn going off for no apparent reason. Costa will head to the line for two. Unable to connect on the first. Make him earn it, Alex. Make these big men are at the line. And the second one is good. O'Quinn gets it up top to McNeil. Good pressure there from Ross. McNeil thinks about it. McLean drives. And good position there from DeCoste, but a nice little floater from Brown on the offensive glass. And a two for one opportunity here for the Nighthawks if they go quickly, but a steal here. McNeil driving, can't get it to go. Good rebound there from McLean, but he's blocked. And Ross going all the way. No good, rebounded by DeCoste. He's gonna go up and get it to go as his glasses come off. 8 seconds on the game clock, McNeil drives, stolen away by Ross, 3 seconds, the lob, and that's going to be a foul going against DeCoste as he pushed off over the back, and it's going to be 2 free throws at the end of the half for the Bears, that's the right call. We'll have 2... It is not halftime yet. We still have two shots going for Carter. And there's no time on the clock, so he will shoot his bonus, and then we will head to a break. Good on the first. Oh. And doesn't get the shooter's touch on the second. So at halftime, the score is the visiting Northumberland Nighthawks, 48. The Breton Education Center Bears, 35. We'll be back with you in approximately 10 minutes. We hope you enjoy our halftime show. Stay tuned.
right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of action here in our fourth game of the Cole Bowl Classic. The hometown Breton Edge Chase Center Bears trail the visiting the Northumberland Nighthawks by 48 to 35 at halftime. And you can make that 50-35 as a quick bucket extends the Nighthawk lead. For those of you just joining, I'm Alex Cloud. I'm here with my good friend, Alan Rosetto. Alan, it's great to have you with us. What did you think of the first half? That was a big answer by the man. He won. That was a nice three just to start this half by the Bears. Uh, I thought Northumberland kind of did what they wanted. They got their uh, their shots up. They pounded the paint. I mean, they kind of dictated the, the first half, in my opinion. Connor Chesson with four personal fouls now. Dacos just before halftime needed some repairs on his glasses after uh, a hit with about 30 seconds left. He got some tape on there now. Looks like he's you ready see to one go. Of the assistant coaches come over and tape up the glasses for him. Uh, unless it might have affected his shooting, he misses the first free throw. And no good on the pair. There from the shot. Don't need a lot of eyesight to do that. Nice close range. Yeah, yeah. Not heavily contested. And they get it over to O'Quinn. Carney now. Carney had a huge first half. And the fake from McLean, the floater is good. Two points, Sarah McLean. Stevenson gets it back to McLeod, back to Stevenson, over to McDonald. McDonald looking for a streak from Stevenson. He finds McLeod, he'll take the three, and he connects, extending the Nighthawk lead to 15. McNeil now. Taking a tough contested mid range. Rebanded by the Nighthawks, and they're moving in transition. And rebanded by Stevenson, strong. Strong board and a nice soft putback. And we got a substitution coming into the game as Ethan McNeil will take a seat. Carney looking for a push. I, be, I believe he means you know, go on a run. Yeah. Not Jackie Moon style. Not offensive fouls. You don't think he's right. looking for that? That's right. That's what I don't think he's looking for. Okay. Floater from Brown, no good. Here comes McLeod. Marcus McLeod gets to Rico. Back to McLeod. And he's going to get called for walking. I'd like to take the moment to give a shout out to Kathy and Mike Hinchy watching from Anaganish. Great to have you in our virtual audience tonight. Hillier now. Gets it over to O'Quinn to the corner for McLean. Back at top. Brown, he wants to get a three. Can't get it to go. Good rebound there from DeCoste. Donald over to McLeod. He'll pull up for three, and it's good. An even 20-point lead now for the Nighthawks, and this crowd is stunned. All 35,000 of them, Alex. 35. Stunned. Is that what they said it was? 35,000. Yeah, lower ball. That's all I can see. Though. Wow. Corner three, no good. Rebound by McDonald. He'll hand off to McLeod. Get it over to Rico, to McLeod. He's feeling it right now. Can't get that one to drop it. Rebound by Rico. Very and what a, nice. What a pass. Is that Lexter Rico or Rajon Rondo? <laughs> what a dish there, giving Stevenson the easiest bucket of the night. And the floater, no good there from Kearney. 
McLeod now. Gets it up to the cost. And nice footwork there, avoiding the charge. There comes Brown quickly in transition. To the corner, Kearney bobbles, drives baseline, throws up the floater, short. Nice rebound there from Carter Brown. And good tip out of bound by Lexter Rico. Great read on that, too, to deflect that pass. Six seconds on the shot clock for the Bears. now, gets it over to Rico. Spalding, back over to McLeod. McDonald, Rico, corner three, rims out. Nice rebound there from Aaron McLean. He's gonna go one on four, drives, gets to the rim. McDonald now, starting to slow the pace for the Nighthawks. Using the screen from Dacoste. Back up to Dacoste at the free throw line. That's a nice pass down low to find Rico. Rico is all over the offensive glass. Foul, foul's gonna go against Plexter Rico. I'm surprised there's not been a technical call out. I, I am honestly amazed. But you know what? I think that stare said a lot yeah. more than a tech could have. Yeah. And official DeBailey is going to go have a word with head coach Mark Stinson. As the Bears take their second time out of this third quarter. Allen, not the start to the half that the Bears were looking for. No, not at all. A couple of big threes by McDonald to start the half. 14 to five run to open things. That's quick math, eh? That's pretty good. That is good, yeah. We have a tweet in from Jade Lynn, who says, let's go Nighthawks, great job. Don't think I read this one already, but this one's from Eileen Pele. Pele says, thank you for allowing me to watch my grandson, Braden, uh, number 11 on the Nighthawks. I don't think he did read that one out. I don't, I don't think I read I that got one, one here, too, from uh, Nathan Penny. He says, go Bears, go. Watch from Halifax. And he wanted to know if you got your license yet, Alex. Just about ready to get things back <laughs> underway here in the third quarter. Coach Carney's having a word with crew chief Paul Bailey. I don't even know if he's a crew chief. I don't remember. He's an official, though. As McNeil in the game, dumps down for Carter Brown. Carter Brown, sorry. Taken. And here comes McDonald. Hooping the Herm. Count it for Braden McDonald. McDonald flexed on that one. That was a big drive. Get the contact and finish strong. I didn't, uh, who was that foul called on? I don't ask much from you, Alan. No, you know what? I don't answer much either. <laughs> Just asked our in-house announcer, former Cobalt MVP, Gary McDonald, 
what the food foul was on, and he proceeded to tell me that number nine got to shoot, so that helped. Good traveling violation against the Bears. Bears coming out in some full court man. We're gonna get a reset to 24 seconds as Paul Bailey comes over here at our scores table. And two days ago was Paul's birthday when he celebrated his 74th birthday. I wouldn't have put him a day over 30. As the cloud comes in. Yep, I mean, Paul in great shape for a man of his age. McNeil now gets it over to Chesson. Chesson thought about the long three. Kearney now gets it over to Brown. Brown gets it back to Kearney. Kearney drives baseline, toss up the left hand floater, no good. Pressure from the Bears coming. Here comes Dacos, who's going to try and go coast to coast. Nice Euro step. He gets his own rebound. He's so tough to block out. He's frustrated with his glasses. Yeah, they go flying again. The halftime repairs didn't work out so well. I missed that. I got to start paying more better attention. Coach Stinson was looking for some uh, a foul there. It looked like DeCoste got some contact, but. Yeah, but that's DeCoste doing business. Uh, that's a good one. Chesson with a beautiful block there. We're gonna get a foul going against Reese Stevenson. I can't even take credit for that to cost but Dylan just texted me and said some of the puns that he would have used. You're getting I know. outside sourcing, man. I thought that was off the top well, of your head. Well, he's already contributed more to this broadcast than you have, so. Yeah, that's true. O'Quinn misses the first. One thing I didn't notice this third quarter, Alex, the Bears seem to be a little uh, scared to go in the post. A couple floaters that have been real short. They got blocked once or twice. Up until Chesson right there. There we go. We got a to cost. He'll drive. He's bumped by number 13, I believe. That foul's going to go against Waylon Petrie. That is the right call. That is Petrie's first personal. I thought you said 13, didn't you? I thought I thought you said 13. Second for the cost. Brown now. It's over to Petrie. Brown thought about a three. Good look in the corner for Chesson. He passes on it. Comes in with the floater and gets it to drop. Chesson providing a little bit of a spark towards the end of this third quarter. Alex, that they'll need, uh, they'll need a fire, not a spark. That's right. But you know what they say you can't start a fire without a spark. Even if you're just dancing in the dark. No good there from the cloud. Chess on with the rebound. He gets it up to Kearney. Hands off to Petrie. Gets to Brown. Kearney. Three. No good. Rebounded by McLeod. McLeod, good jump stop there. And that's going to be out of bounds. Job by O'Quinn breaking up that pass. Nighthawks possession here, 18 seconds on the shot clock. Dylan Sweet is going to check in for the first time today. As they inbound 
to Stevenson. And he's going to get called for the shoulder. Offensive foul. Dropping the shoulder. That's his fourth personal foul. I think it's his fourth anyways. <laughs> Who really knows at Wait, this point? Waiting to get our stats correct today. Well, normally, you know, we, we see the player foul on the scoreboard, so I can just assume. Well, we do have some rookie players. We've got some rookie uh, you know, clock every, officials here, too. As we have Connor hitting a big shot, big three. But, you know, everybody starts on time. Everyone's, everyone's first game is going to come before the second and their third. I didn't know that. Stevenson just too big to be handled down there. Good tip there from Rico. It's going to be double tip off McSween. So you have 14 seconds on the shot clock. Between uh, Re Rico and McDonald here, they've had a big, big third quarter here to really extend this lead. 22 point advantage here for the Nighthawks. As it's Ross now, gets it to the big man. Drop set, the fade off the drop. No good. Here comes Kearney now. Kearney gets sent away. Here comes Rico in transition. Coach Stinson wanted a call there, but Carter Brown is just going to go over and get a bucket. And Stevenson passes that one right to Chesson. And Chesson can't get that one to drop. Here comes McLeod now. Guarded by Brown. McLeod right to the rim, can't get it to fall. And it's a nice hustle there. That would have saved the ball as he's went out. Third second differential between game clock and shot clock. And the crowd wants a call, and they're going to get that one. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory there, Alex. And Reese Stevenson is fouled out with 14.8 seconds to go in the third quarter. So Coach Stinson is trying to, deciding to ride with his big here in the third quarter with four fouls, and it does not pay off. As that inbounds pass is stolen by Rico. And a big block there from Connor Chesson, but it's going to be rebounded. Two seconds to shoot. Coach Stinson is not happy. He, you know what? He's not happy with the, the officiating. He must be happy with the way the team's playing, but he, I think he's looking for a little bit more. I've never seen any coach angrier in a 22-point lead. Point one second, so it looks like they're going to throw the lob because they can't catch and shoot. That's the only play. And after three quarters of play, the score is Northumberland Nighthawks 71, Breton Education Center Bears 49. Allen, the uh, Nighthawks came out firing from long range there yeah. in the third quarter. What can uh, Coach Kearney's team do to try and claw back into this one? I think they, they can't. They have that big deficit going into the fourth. I think they got to take it basket by basket. They can't look at that 22 points as a whole. They got to just chip away at it. We see some crazier things happen here, Alex. This is true. There have been some wild comebacks in Cole Bowl history. We have a tweet from Abby who says, Hey, Cole Bowl, we're, me and my mom are supporting from Alberta. Thank you for your tweet. And we also have a, a is it a gif or a gif? Has anyone ever decided how you're supposed to pronounce it? It's not size, it's just a gif. I'm going to go with gif. 
Uh, and it's uh, someone dunking and says booyah. I like it. I like it too. I'm a fan. Now the Lady Bears are trying to psych up the crowd here for this fourth quarter. The Zoo Crew. You know, back in my day, they only had Zoo Crew during the playoffs, but the, the, the fan support, team spirit is just outrageous nowadays. Fans don't take time off, Alex. That's right. They support 24-7. No days off. Just about ready to go here. Carney controls for the Bears. Into the corner for Chessa. That one taken away. Very loud gym right now as for the Nighthawks. That's what I'm hearing. I now. mean, we can hear Nighthawks because we're over by we're kind of on this side. But the rest of the gym is mostly mostly cheering for the Bears. I don't know, Alex. It's hard to tell when there's 80,000 people here. Nice rebound there from McNeil. He'll push it in transition. Chess on, McNeil, thinks about the three, drives to the left. Tough finish, can't get it to go. As he falls down, looks like he tripped on something. A steal by Chess on. And that's gonna be a blocking foul going against Marcus McLeod. Chess on didn't like it because he thought he was getting to at the line. Cloud didn't like it because he thought it was a charge. And Nighthawks are going to call a timeout here, their first of the half. Obviously didn't like something that he saw in that possession, besides this is the time where we cut it out early before you know, it becomes a habit. Yep. You want to fix things as quickly as possible. And both of these teams will be back in action tomorrow in day two of the Cold Bowl as the Northumberland Nighthawks will take on the Montague at 1 p.m. And the Beck Bears will take on Winston Churchill High School at 8 p.m. Felt like I had to say high school there. Just taking on Winston yeah. Churchill might have been be tough to ask. Be, be a tough one for sure. Uh, we have a tweet in from Jordan McPhee. He says, Alan owes me 30 bucks. Thank, thanks for your tweet, Jordan. I would like to know from what. Maybe a little bit of rookie pressure getting the Carney there. Pass going off his uh, fingertips. Ross now gets it off to, uh, gets it over to the cost. He's gonna take his long steps in for the bucket. And another turnover by the Bears. You know, Beck with a young team this year. Uh, only four returners from last year's squad. So this is a lot of first time action for a lot of these players. You don't want to call it a rebuild. This is still got some uh, experienced players there, but there's a lot of young talent coming up out. That's right. As we have Chess on now. Gets it to McLean, the spin move. That's good footwork there for McLean. He earned the trip to the line. 
as that foul will go against Spalding, his third personal foul. I think I erroneously said he had three in the first half. I think he only had two. The first one is good for McLean. Bears coming out in the press. And good tip there from Hillier, but Rico comes up with it. He gets it over to McLeod. McLeod carries over half. Gets it over to Ross. Ross to the cost. McLeod drives, picks to the corner, a Spalding three. And that's going to be a good decision here for McLeod as he resets. Try to milk some more time off this clock. And just, just a strong move from DeCoste. And I'm not sure who jumped higher on that play, DeCoste or his coach. Stinson nearly hit the roof. He was pretty uh, pretty excited about that one. And that one's going to go off of Aaron McLean. Good hustle to try and make, the, uh, make something happen there. Yep, yeah, he's doing all the right things out there. Just unlucky a bit there. Good steal there from Carter Brown, but can't get the layup to fall. Rico gets it over to McLeod. Ross him. Hands off to Rico. Rico drives around. And loses that out of bounds, and it's going to be Beck Ball. We have a tweet in from Taylor who says, let's go Nighthawks. As Ben Kearney pulls a three and he gets that one to rattle home. Rico now, all the way up to Spalding. He'll drive, looking for the call, but no whistle as Hillier goes down and tiptoes around McLeod for the easy layup. And it's going to be another turnover here. Uh, that one will tip off of Rico. Bears will get the ball with 14 seconds on the shot clock. We've got a substitution in the game as McDonald will check in for Ross. Gets it into Chesson, to the corner for McLean. Hillier, thought about shooting. Gets it over to Chesson, he'll take the three. Can't connect. And it's gonna be a jump ball. Good hustle by both players there. I know the Bears are down 19 right now, but you still like, I like to play from air. It's awesome he, up there, right? he hustles, that's what he does, he's a worker. 3-12 on this team. It's going to be an offensive foul going against Marcus McLeod, his fourth personal. Kearney for three. Book it. Good run here by the Bears, putting some pressure on, getting this crowd alive. As the cost, the big catch. He'll take, and that's going to be a charge. Oh, it's going to be a travel first. I, I think Coach Stinson should be happy with that call, because yeah. if not, that was going to be a foul. One or the other. <laughs> yeah, he's lucky that he got the, the travel call first. Good drive here from McLean. Good offensive rebound, and he's going to earn a trip to the line. That looks like it's going to be Spalding. That might be Spalding's fourth. Actually, 
And there's the technical <laughs> doc of it. <laughs> I, think, I think that was uh, Spalding's fifth personal foul. So technical free throw, no good from Kearney. Nighthawks will take a timeout. Their second of the half. Beck doing a good job here, trying to chip into this one, and they're doing it the right way. So they're getting to the free throw line. Four foul team fouls, which means that they will be in the bonus for the remainder of the game. Crowd reminding us that they do, in fact, have spirit. Great to see. It's always nice to see spirit in the gym, Alex. You think this is more of a breather timeout for uh, Northumberland? You know, I think it's just a, a, a settle your guys down. Take you know, a step back and see. The, the crowd's getting back into it. They're starting to make a run. Yeah. Just want to get your guys back to doing what they were doing, which gave yeah. them the big lead. You know, don't try and do anything. Anything special? Just go out there and run through your run through your offense. Get some good looks. I mean, play good defense. Out. Stevenson out there is a big body that you don't have in the post, That's you know. Right. And now Spalding out of the game as well. Going to need some big minutes for some different players. Also in foul trouble is Marcus McLeod. He has four. Aaron McLean will head to the line for two. That's good. Lone player in foul trouble for Beck is Connor Chesson. He has four. McLean has three. No good on the free throw, but an offensive rebound by Carter Brown. Not now it's Kearney. A bad thing out. Kearney wants three. Can't find it on that one. Right. We'll get a Nighthawks inbound on the baseline. They get it in. And it's McLeod. No, sorry, it's McDonald. Gets it over to Ross. Now to McLeod. McDonald. Ross. Thinks about it. Back McDonald. McLeod. He'll definitely shoot it. And he connects. McLeod from long range. And Connor Chesson goes right in for two. Stinson looked like he wanted a carry call there. I see where he's coming from. And another big three. Marcus McLeod, shot after shot. Those McLeods are clutch. Stinson's pretty fired up, too. He is fired up, yep. And we're going to get a foul going against. She said, well. Going against DeCoste. His second person. Which puts back into the bonus. A couple of big shots here from McLeod, stretching this lead back to 19 points. A couple of free throws now coming to try and cut into that. Coach Stinson having a word with the cost. And I think he might be just trying to calm him down a little bit. The cost wasn't happy with that call. And he's your lone big that you got left right now. You want to make sure he's still in the zone and for the game, right? Looks like assistant coach uh, Scott DeCost is running the huddle right now. Could be a relation there. We don't know. Could be. Possible father-son combo on both teams. I mean, there's a chance it was Eric. There's three names here, and it says okay. manager Eric. It could have been manager Eric Nielsen. Okay. All right. But I, I think it was the Nighthawk fans might be able to answer that. Yeah, I, I think it was DeCoste. As Kearney will head to the line. Short on the first. 
Second half is good. 18 point game. Can be a foul called against Aaron McLean. That's his fifth personal foul. O'Quinn will check back into the game. Oh, I was wrong before. I, I am not doing a good job keeping track of fouls. <laughs> Thanks for that heavy sigh, Alan. That's, that's a great uh, contribution. was a sigh. It's more of a laugh. <laughs> great contribution. Rico now. Gets it over to McDonald. Gets it over to the top. And it's going to be a travel. That's a good call. Definitely a shuffle of the feet there. Get pass to O'Quinn. Kearney, he'll take the three. Can't connect, rebounded by McDonald. And they're gonna slow it down here as we approach the four minute mark in the fourth quarter. 18 point lead for the Nighthawks. McDonald is gonna take a travel. That's, yep, absolutely the right call. Yep, easy call. Hillier now. Drives, stops, turns, shoots, connects. Rico now. Going all the way. Absorbing the contact and gets it to go. Going coast to coast. And Chesson's going to lose the handle on that one. Be a kick ball. Get a new 24 second clock. 3.22 to go in the game. Rico now. Going right into the paint again. Ooh, and can't man. get the roll on that one. But a rebound from McDonald. Who's going to earn a trip to the charity strike as Ben Kearney will pick up his second personal foul. First one for McDonald is no good. And that one is good. Kearney now, the Euro step, the floater, won't drop. And it's taken by Rico. Get it over. Ross. McDonald down low. And we're gonna have a foul call. One's gonna go against Hillier. And checking into the game for the first time, grade eight, son of co former Cole MVP. This is Luke McKinnon. He's a, he's a grade eight superstar. Showing up, getting the call up to play with the high school team. You use superstar very loosely. That's he's a great player, don't get me wrong. That's a fun word. Son of 1987 Cole Bowl MVP, Doug McKinnon. On hand for his proud father moment. A lot of father-son combinations going on tonight, Alex. <laughs> Only your son was here. Yeah, poor little fella. <laughs> That's going to be Etta Bounds. Nighthawks ball. 
233 to go in the game. Nice catch there by DeCoste. The kick to the shooter. The plow hands it off to Ross. To DeCoste. He's going to take a strong step. He's such a strong guy down there. Very difficult to stop. Foul's going to go against O'Quinn. His second. No good on the free throw. That's McKinnon now. Gets it over to O'Quinn. O'Quinn drives, can't finish with the left. And now Rico. Rico gets it over to Ross. Short jumper, no good, taken by DeCoste. And McDonald throws it up and that somehow goes in the net. That might be the dagger, Alex. That could be the dagger, could very well be. Here's Kearney, he'll drive, he's fouled. Foul's gonna go against Cohen Ross. First personal foul. Bears are in the bonus. Carney now shooting two for the Bears. Able to connect on the first half of Bella. And can't get the roll, but a nice offensive rebound from Carter Brown with a putback. Rico now splitting the defenders, and he's going to slow it down. Use some clock here. Goss drives. And he's going to get the layup to fall. Chess on now. He'll take a deep, deep three. No good. Good rebound there from DeCoste. And Rico, once again, will slow the pace. to head towards the exit here as we approach one minute to play. We're gonna get some more substitutions into the game as Dacos will check out. It seems like Dacos might be a little bit uh, laboring something. Uh, he might have came down awkward on that last uh, put back. Hopefully he's all right to continue this week. And the floater is good from Fong Trin. The skip over to O'Quinn. Here's McKinnon. Gets it back to O'Quinn. Good fakes. Jumper no good. Rebounded by Nolan Frazier. And here's Rico. Gets it to Trin. And that's Braden George absorbing the contact. As we're going to have exactly 24 seconds remaining in the game. Shot clock turned off. Chess on now. Drives to the rim. Can't get the drop, and that will likely do it for the game. Just kidding, we get a steal and a layup by Carter Brown. And we have a jump ball, it'll be Bears possession. We love the hustle here at the end of the game. And Kearney will shoot a three. And that one's gonna be short, final score. The Northumberland Nighthawks, 93. Practice Case Center Bears, 70.
This way, Nighthawk Stun, the home crowd on opening night. Thank you everyone so much for being with us. We'll be here all week. We hope you tune into the rest of the games. And we hope you have yourself a very merry tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>